The third largest category is um, those variants that are meaningful. They actually do change the meaning of the, of the text, but they're not viable. That is, they're found in one late manuscript, and uh, that manuscript, um, it, it, uh, it doesn't have any possibility of really going back to the original. Some of these can be actually quite funny. I mean, they're meaningful in one sense, but in another, they're not. Like in uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, uh, 2.7, there's a major textual problem where Paul says that uh, he and Silas became either gentle among the Thessalonians or they became infants among the Thessalonians. And the difference between the two is a single letter in Greek. It's either napioi or apioi. Well, one 14th century scribe comes along and he sees that, and he must have been daydreaming about his old equestrian days or something because he put hippoi. We became horses among you. <laughs> and so instead of gentle, instead of infants, we became horses among you. I think it's funny. And I, I don't think it was on purpose, but it ends up being a, a meaningful variant that is, is so meaningful it becomes stupid. I mean, it's, it's, it's silly, but that's still that kind of variant. Or in John 1.15, you've got in Codex L, a 9th century manuscript uh, that's Alexandrian, and it's very sloppily done by the scribe. It's a, you have John the Baptist saying, after me comes air. That's because the word that he's supposed to use, use is aner, after me comes a man. Uh, whom I'm, I'm not even worthy to loosen the sandals of his feet, you know. But the word for man is aner, and the word for air is aer. He dropped the new, left out a new, and so after me comes air. <laughs> so I guess Jesus is a phantom after all, you know. But, you know, those, it, it's, it's kind of a meaningful variant, but also kind of a funny one. But you do have meaningful variants uh, among late manuscripts that nobody gives them any credibility of going back to the original. The, the word of the Lord versus the word of God, when you've got a couple of late manuscripts that have the word of God instead of the word of the Lord in one place. And that's our third largest category. You get to the last category of those textual variants that are both meaningful, they affect the meaning of the text, and they are viable. That is, they have a good enough pedigree that we wrestle with whether it goes back to the autographic text or not. It's less than 1% of those 400,000 variants. In fact, it's perhaps a very small portion of that 1%. It's not 400, it's not 4,000 textual problems. It's, my guess, it's probably about 1,000 textual problems where, that are both meaningful and, and viable. And uh, one instance would be um, uh, Romans 5, one, a very famous textual problem, where Paul says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Well, some manuscripts, in fact, uh, m most of our earlier manuscripts have, therefore, having been justified by faith, let us have peace with God. And the difference in Greek is, is a single letter difference. It's either the word echamen or the word echamen. You might not have even heard that difference. It's echamen with the a, echamen with the o. And yet both of those words in, in first century Greek would have been pronounced as a long o. So it's either the difference between echamen or echamen. And I think it's an early error of hearing from a very, very early scribe who misheard what Paul said. And uh, in fact, I think it's that scribe who made that mistake originally. But Paul would have corrected it. But nevertheless, the, the point is that there's a thing that that's a meaningful and viable variant. And yet, what does it affect? Does Paul ever say we have peace with God as, as a statement of our position in heaven right now? Yes, he says that kind of thing in many places. Does he say in other places, Christians be reconciled to God like he does to the Corinthians? Yes, he does. And so in both senses, Paul could make that kind of a statement. The question that we're asking is not which one fits into Pauline theology, but which one fits into that passage. And so the value of knowing about these texture variants is how they affect our exegesis and our exposition, not how they affect our theology. So uh, to me, it's significant that less than 1% of all these texture variants are really meaningful and viable, and that's what the whole debate is over. And again, in Misquoting Jesus, Ehrman gives the impression over and over again that we've got these hundreds of thousands of variants, and at one place he says, we could go on practically forever talking about these variants. Well, sure, if you're going to talk about all 400,000, and you're going to put everybody to sleep. But if you're talking about the meaningful one, that's a limited discussion. And so he gives an impression that the, the meaningful and viable variants are every bit as common as the ones that are neither meaningful nor, nor viable.